Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Braverman here. And today I wanted to share another read aloud with you. Uh, today I thought that I would do something different than Harry Potter because I know that not everybody has the same interest in books as I do. So um, I got on Epic and uh, in honor of April Fool's Day, I thought that a comedy might be a good idea. So I'm gonna go to my search bar and type in comedy and search. And I noticed that the first book that came up, um, Sideways Stories from Wayside School, is actually a book that we have in our classroom library that I've found um, students find really funny. So how about we try that one today? Um, maybe we can read two chapters together. And then if you're interested in reading more of this funny story, um, there are, looks like 139 pages. So it's a, it's a chapter book. It's not too long, um, but it's filled with funny stories, um, 30 funny stories to be exact. Um, and you can do that on Epic on your own. Uh, if you remember Senorita's epic code you can enter your class code at getepic.com if you don't remember that code by heart um, just reach out to me on schoology and i can send it to you okay um, so here we go let's start reading sideways stories from wayside school by lewis scar introduction this book contains 30 stories about the children and teachers at Wayside School. But before we get to them, there is something you ought to know so that you don't get confused. Wayside School was accidentally built sideways. It was supposed to be only one story high with 30 classrooms all in a row. Instead, it is 30 stories high with one classroom on each story. The builder said he was very sorry. The children at Wayside like having a sideways school. They have an extra large playground. The children and teachers described in this book all go to class on the top floor. So there are 30 stories from the 30th story of Wayside School. It has been said that these stories are strange and silly. That is probably true. However, when I told stories about you to the children at Wayside, they thought you were very strange and silly. That is probably also true. Chapter one, Mrs. Gorf. Mrs. Gorf had a long tongue and pointed ears. She was the meanest teacher in Wayside School. She taught the class on the 30th story. If you children are bad, she warned, or if you answer a problem wrong, I'll wiggle my ears, stick out my tongue, and turn you into apples. Mrs. Gorf didn't like children, but she loved apples. Joe couldn't add. He couldn't even count, but he knew that if he answered a problem wrong, he would be turned into an apple. So he copied from John. He didn't like to cheat, but Mrs. Gorf had never taught him how to add. One day, Mrs. Gorf caught Joe copying John's paper. She wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left stuck out her tongue and turned Joe into an apple. Then she turned John into an apple for, getting, for letting Joe cheat. Hey, that isn't fair, said Todd. Joe was only trying to help a friend. Mrs. Gorf wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left, stuck out her tongue and turned Todd into an apple. Does anybody else have an opinion, she asked. Nobody said a word. Mrs. Gorf laughed and placed the three apples on her desk. Stephen started to cry. He couldn't help it. He was scared. I do not allow crying in the classroom, said Mrs. Gorf. She wiggled her ears, first the right one, then her left, stuck out her tongue and turned Stephen into an apple. For the rest of the day, the children were absolutely quiet. And when they went home, they were too scared even to talk to their parents. But Joe, John, Todd, and Stephen couldn't go home. Mrs. Gorf just left them on her desk. They were able to talk to each other, but they didn't have much to say. Their parents were very worried. They didn't know where their children were. Nobody seemed to know. 
The next day, Kathy was late for school. As soon as she walked in, Mrs. Gorf turned her into a nipple. <laughs> Paul sneezed during class. He was turned into an apple. Nancy said, God bless you, when Paul sneezed. Mrs. Gorf wiggled her ears, first her right one and then her left, stuck out her tongue and turned Nancy into an apple. Terrence fell out of his chair. He was turned into an apple. Mauricia tried to run away. She was halfway to the door as Mrs. Gorf's right ear began to wiggle. When she reached the door, Mrs. Gorf's left ear wiggled. Mauricia opened the door and had one foot outside when Mrs. Gorf stuck out her tongue. Mauricia became an apple. Mrs. Gorf picked up the apple from the floor and put it on her desk with the others. Then a funny thing happened. Mrs. Gorf turned around and fell over a piece of chalk. The three Erics laughed. They were turned into apples. Mrs. Gorf had a dozen apples on her desk. Joe, John, Todd, Stephen, Kathy, Paul, Nancy, Terrence, Mauricia, and the three Erics, Eric Fry, Eric Bacon, and Eric Ovens. Lewis, the yard teacher, walked into the classroom. He had missed the children at recess. He had heard that Mrs. Gorf was the mean teacher. So he came up to investigate. He saw the 12 apples on Mrs. Gorf's desk. I must be wrong, he thought. She must be a good teacher if so many children bring her apples. He walked back down to the playground. The next day, a dozen more children were turned into apples. Lewis, the yard teacher, came back into the room. He saw 24 apples on Mrs. Gore's desk. There were only three children left in the class. Well, she must be the best teacher in the world, he thought. By the end of the week, all of the children were the apples. Huh. Mrs. Gorf was very happy. Now I can go home, she said. I don't have to teach anymore. I won't have to walk up 30 flights of stairs ever again. You're not going anywhere, shouted Todd. He jumped off the desk and bopped Mrs. Gorf on the nose. The rest of the apples followed. Mrs. Gorf fell on the floor and the apples jumped all over her. Stop, she shouted, or I'll turn you into applesauce. But the apples didn't stop and Mrs. Gorf could do nothing about it. Turn us back into children, Todd demanded. Mrs. Gorf had no choice. She stuck out her tongue, wiggled her ears, this time her left one first and then her right, and turned the apples back into children. All right, said Mauricia. Let's go get Lewis. He'll know what to do. No, screamed Mrs. Gorf. I'll turn you back into apples. She wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left and stuck out her tongue. But Jenny held up a mirror and Mrs. Gorf turned herself into an apple. The children didn't know what to do. They didn't have a teacher. Even though Mrs. Gorf was mean, they didn't think it was right to leave her as an apple, but none of them knew how to wiggle their ears. Lewis, the yard teacher walked in. Where's Mrs. Gorf, he asked. Nobody said a word. Boy, am I hungry, said Lewis. I don't think Mrs. Gorf would mind if I ate this apple. After all, she always has so many. He picked up the apple, which was really Mrs. Gorf, shined it up on his shirt, and ate it. Yikes. <laughs> Chapter two, last one, Mrs. Jules. Mrs. Jules had a terribly nice face. She stood at the bottom of Wayside School and looked up. She was supposed to teach the class on the 30th story. The children on the 30th story were scared. They had never told anybody what had happened to Mrs. Gorf. They hadn't had a teacher for three days. They were afraid of what their new teacher would be like. They had heard she'd be a terribly nice teacher. They had never had a nice teacher. They were terribly afraid of nice teachers. Mrs. Jules walked up the winding, creaking staircase to the 30th story. She was also afraid. She was afraid of the children. She had heard that they would be horribly cute children. She had never taught cute children. She was horribly afraid of cute children. She opened the door to the classroom. She was terribly nice. The children could just tell by looking at her. Mrs. Jules looked at the children. They were horribly cute. In fact, they were much too cute to be children. I don't believe it, said Mrs. Jules. It's a room full of monkeys. The children looked at each other. They didn't see any monkeys. 
This is ridiculous, said Mrs. Jules, just ridiculous. I walked all the way up 30 flights of stairs for nothing but a class of monkeys. What do they think I am? I am a teacher, not a zookeeper. The children looked at her. They didn't know what to say. Todd scratched his head. Oh, I'm sorry, said Mrs. Jules. Please don't get me wrong. I have nothing against monkeys. It, it is just that I was expecting children. I like monkeys, I really do. Why, I'm sure we could all play all kinds of monkey games. What are you talking about, asked Todd. Mrs. Jules nearly fell off her chair. Well, what do you know, a talking monkey. Tomorrow, I'll bring you a banana. My name is Todd, said Todd. The children were flabbergasted. They all raised their hands. I'm sorry, said Mrs. Jules, but I don't have enough bananas for all of you. I didn't expect this. Next week, I'll bring in a whole bushel. I don't want a banana, said Calvin. I'm not a monkey. Oh, would you like a peanut, asked Mrs. Jules. I think I might have a bag of peanuts in my purse. Wait a second. Yes, here it is. Thanks, said Calvin. Calvin liked peanuts. Allison stood up. I'm not a monkey, she said. I'm a girl. My name is Allison, and so is everybody else. Mrs. Jules was shocked. Do you mean to tell me that every monkey in here is named Allison? No, said Jenny. She means we're all children. My name is Jenny. No, said Mrs. Jules. You're much too cute to be children. Jason raised his hand. Yes, said Mrs. Jules, the chimpanzee in the red shirt. My name is Jason, said Jason, and I am not a chimpanzee. Well, you're too small to be a gorilla, said Mrs. Jules. I'm a boy, said Jason. You're not a monkey, said Mrs. Jules. No, said Jason. And the rest of the class, they're not monkeys either, asked Mrs. Jules. No, said Allison, that is what we've been trying to tell you. Are you sure? asked Mrs. Jules. We'd know if we were monkeys, wouldn't we? asked Calvin. I don't know, said Mrs. Jules. Do monkeys know that they are monkeys? I don't know, said Allison. I'm not a monkey. No, I suppose you're not, said Mrs. Jules. Okay, in that case, we have a lot of work to do. Reading, writing, subtraction, addition, spelling. Everybody take out a piece of paper. We will have a test now. Jason tapped Todd on the shoulder. He said, do you want to know something? I liked it better when she thought we were monkeys. I know, said Todd. I guess now it means she won't bring me a banana. There will be no talking in class, said Mrs. Jules. She wrote Todd's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. <laughs> if you are interested in continuing to read some of these um, funny stories, uh, you can pick up with chapter three titled Joe. Looks like he's got something like potatoes or something on his desk. Um, and I think we just read two stories, so there should be 28 more funny short stories. Oops. I'm going to X out for now. And remember, that was called Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Lewis Scar. And you can search that right on Epic. Let me know if you need the code. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week online. Um, I will be contacting you and your parents more later on this week to give you way more information. So all you need to know is that um, you can look forward to seeing um, me on video chat and getting to talk with me and your classmates. So get excited. I know I am and uh, I can't wait to see you next week. All right. Bye guys.